Let's talk about three cameras. The venerable 50 megapixel Canon 5DSR, the first ever full frame Canon mirrorless, the EOS R, and the new ridiculously specced EOS R5. Which camera is right for you? Well, I spent time with one model in a studio setting ignoring all of my previous subjective opinions. I wanted a fresh perspective, and I'm calling it the battle of the R. ER Using each of these cameras, I'm mostly focused on photography. But I also shot a bit of video, which I'll share later in another video. I'm gonna focus in on three main areas as I worked with each camera, and I hope my upcoming thoughts will help you make your decision on which camera is right for you. Number one, ergonomics. An important factor in choosing the right camera is ergonomics. The last thing you want to have after a long shoot is a cramped hand and finger blisters. Each of these three cameras have pleasing ergonomics, but if I were to choose one winner, it would actually be the older 5DSR with its bigger size and wider button placement. Not to mention the larger control wheel on the back making image review a pleasurable experience. The 5DSR weighs the most of the three cameras, so that is one thing to note. In terms of ergonomics, the R5 is a close second. The feel of this camera almost matches the older 5D design in many ways. With the R5, we welcomed back the spin wheel on the back of the camera that was missing on the original R. And if you haven't yet made the jump to the R system from the old 5D, well, the R5 would be a great choice to ensure a great transition. Another thing to consider with ergonomics is the lack of a flip screen on the 5DSR. If you're doing a lot of video shooting at an awkward angle, the older 5D design would make that difficult. So I guess it's fair to say the 5DSR wins the ergonomic category, but only as it applies to photography. And with that said, all three cameras have a very nice deep grip, which is very important to ensure your hand does not get sore after long periods of shooting. And if weight is a more important factor and you have smaller hands, then consider the original EOS R for its smaller compact size and weight. Number two, speed. Speed is another crucial area to consider when choosing the right camera for your shooting style. And by speed, I don't only mean raw frames per second, but really speed and operation. The last thing you want to do is wait on your camera to simply review images. And when we look at the first camera, the 5DSR, speed is not the first attribute I would use to describe it. This older camera is pushing huge 50 megapixel files through its older dual digit 6 processors. The continuous burst tops out at only 5 frames a second. The AF is fast and accurate, but no match for the dual pixel AF of both the EOS R and the R5. Also, the user interface that controls the AF points uses the small thumbstick in a more compressed AF area in the viewfinder whereas the touch and drag feature that is present on both the EOS R and the R5 have made my shooting experience much faster when choosing AF points. Which brings me to eye tracking AF. This further separates the EOS R and the R5 from the 5DSR. Comparing more closely the EOS R and the R5, the R5 has a faster startup time faster viewfinder refresh rate at 120 frames per second. I really never thought the EOS R to be a slow camera, but when you start using the R5, you quickly realize that small speed gains in the R5 are worth it when working fast. 
For continuous drive shooting, the R5 takes the cake at 20 frames a second, followed by the EOS R at 8 frames a second and the 5DSR at a paltry 5 frames per second. And in terms of video, there is no contest. The R5 wins here, breaking 120 frames per second shooting at full 4K without a crop factor. You can shoot at 120 frames on the EOS R, but only at 720p and without AF. Speed is an important feature, but only when you have battery juice left. Consider that the 5DSR battery lasts over twice as long as the mirrorless R offerings. Number three, image quality. All three of these R cameras provide beautiful RAW files. Looking at overall image quality, you must consider all aspects, sharpness, color depth, high ISO performance, dynamic range, all of these things come into play when you're processing photos. The 5DSR features a self-canceling low-pass filter, which creates very sharp images. This makes the 5DSR images ever so slightly sharper than either of the R5 or the EOS R. It's really close though, and overall I am very impressed with the R5 sharpness. I think considering that the new lenses for RF are performing better in most cases than the older EF cousins, this could indeed put the R5 ahead depending on lens choices. On paper, the R5 has the overall best image quality, all things considered. With the R5, you get more dynamic range, more color depth, and amazing low light ISO performance. Can, you can tell that Canon worked really hard on this sensor and it shows. With all that said, to my subjective processing eye, there's always been something special about the 5DSR images. Perhaps it's simply the sheer mammoth near medium format size of the files that have always left me speechless when conditions are right. I have never been disappointed by the 5DSR image quality. So my final thoughts, all three of these cameras offer important feature sets for different styles of shooting. If you're primarily a still shooter working in a studio environment with good consistent lighting, it's easy to argue that the 5DSR with a trusty old EF 70-200 2.8 would be a wonderful, cheap way to make money and provide your clients with beautiful headshots. If you shoot a combo of stills and video and need a camera that's easy to use straight out of the box and it's on the cheaper end and sets you up into Canon's newer RF lens universe. The EOS R is a really great fit. It's a solid performer with all the main features most shooters will need to create amazing content for both video and photography. And if you desire the fastest speed possible with no limits and the best overall option to move from the old 5D era and you have the means, get yourself the R5. It is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. So there you have it, the venerable 5DSR versus the young and spry new R-series cameras. When you consider all that we've discussed in this video, and you also look at the current prices online, let me know what you guys end up going with in the comments below. One last thing before we go, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Rob Smith who sent me photos of his 30 inch Apple cinema display, which is the same display I have behind me. And he wanted to share some photos of his amazing setup with his Apple cinema display. A lot of my other videos feature Apple products and I'm a huge fan and very passionate about not only photography, but technology like Apple products and especially some of the older stuff that is from the Steve Jobs era, like some of this, this stuff that's behind me here. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified when a new video drops. And give a thumbs up if you liked today's content.